me up. It's such a role, my image is so clean, but I'm like, how could I be a part of it? You know, and it was like, well, you know, this is gonna be a big show and it's definitely gonna be, you're gonna be the futuristic uh, Cosby. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if me coming from the streets, like, yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah, but there's a couple of things. And other people have bigger vision. Sometimes you think of, you know, and when you're in hip hop, man, you're thinking, oh, I gotta, my, one, I think the, the, the only way this could work for me, I'm not a person that have to prove to my peers how real I am. They know how real I am. You know, I'm from the streets, I live on the streets, and I looked at people that turned successful, that was able to change their life and be from the streets. That's the most important thing to me, being able to make that crossover and still be real, still be yourself. So me taking out the teeth and that type of stuff, it was nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I started without all that anyway. You know, I could always go back to having gold teeth, but just to be able to be a part of a family show and come from the streets, it's definitely opening up other doors that we could never even imagine. You know, like you say, me me being the first hip hop dad. You know, because you got a lot of us out there, but it's not respected because you figure, oh, you in the rap business. You know, you ain't supposed to be a father. But, you know, we take care of our kids. You got guys out there on the streets hustling, taking care of their kids. You got people hustling to take care of their kids. You know, they got, they got people out there committing crimes to take care of their kids. They'd rather go do life in prison to make sure their kid have a bike or a good Christmas or something. You know, so, I mean, we always been taking care of our kids, but it, it never was put out there because we didn't know how to do it on a larger scale. And with me being on this Nickelodeon channel and being the first hip-hop dad and me and Romy together, the first hip-hop family, you know, to me, that's opening up other avenues with, I'm trying to teach kids that you can still be real, you can still be duck, you, you can still be thugging, you can still be gangster and still be yourself. And you don't, you can mature. You know what I'm saying? It's like all the other people out there that after time go by, you know, people look at that term, oh, I'm hard. What, you hard, you done got shot, or you in jail? That don't make you hard. You hard when you can survive that. You hard when you can make it out of the ghetto. You know, that's what I consider myself as being hard. You know what I'm saying? I was able to make it out. And that, to me, that's when you real. When you can take your mom out the hood, take your grandmother out the hood, you can take their kids out the hood, you know what I'm saying? You can take some of your friends out the hood. Oh, you hard. You know, and that's what this Nickelodeon show is about, and that's what the Romeo show is about. I mean, we want our people to watch this. I, I mean, I mean, even always that Zoom in the BT. You know, on Saturdays, go go to Nickelodeon watch it. This is something special. It's special for our people. This to me, this is crossing over. This is when Rosa Parks get off the bus. This this for real. This is us crossing over in a different market to say, wow, we can make change. We can be the best people we can be, and we still will come from. You can't let our environment dictate where we at in life. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm doing. I'm not afraid to show people, oh yeah, you know what? I'm always love BT. I'm always love my fans. But if I could take it up a step higher and better myself and better my life for my family and think about the future, go for it. Don't be afraid of that. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid of a challenge to say, you know what? You can't make something better out of your life. You know, don't just think, oh, I got to be this hardcore rapper all my life. For what? You know, as you mature, I mean, to be honest with you, the thing about me, my music is never gonna change. I think everybody got two sides to them. It's a good side and a bad side. And I, I think you can push a cat up against the wall, they say he gonna scratch. You know what I'm saying? And I and that's that's gonna be the title of my next album. It's called a good side and a bad side. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you see this side of me, but you press this button, you see another side of me. And that's just that's to me it's called survival. You know what I'm saying? And you got to me it's about respect. You gotta respect people no matter what, what they are. Whether you're on TV, whether you really living in the real world, you know, whether you play you're an athlete. I mean, people gotta stop disrespecting people that's trying to make an honest living. You know? So what you don't wanna stand out there and sell drugs? That's a smart person to me. You know, a dumb person say, I'm gonna stand on the cone to, you know, at the end of the day, man, that's that's a bad living. You know, because it come to an end come to an end so you know for all the kids out there you know we definitely taking it to another level where like we taking hip hop to another level you know at, at first we changed the game where we start showing people that hip hop people could take care of their business and make money and now we showing people that hip hop could be a part of this multi-culture you know and that's what this show is this show is for everybody it's not just for blacks it's for whites it's for latinos it's for uh, Asians it's for everybody you know, and it's a blessing. 
that I was able to come out of hip hop, me and my son, and us to be able to work as a father and son team. I mean, you know, I've been getting comments now across the world. Oh, you know, you the modern day Bill Cosby and Romeo the modern day Will Smith. It's a blessing, man. I, I, I take that as wild. You know, I take that as a blessing from where I come from. To be able to be perceived on that level is incredible. You know, it's something that I never dreamed of. That's hot, man. Yeah. That's refreshing, too. Oh, Especially yeah. Especially that you, you know, you're putting it out there that, you know, because from, from the commercials that I've seen, yeah. it looks more of a suburban oh, life yeah. type thing. And yeah. it shows another reality oh, of yeah. black people that, oh, yeah. you know, you don't well, get to see on like a UPN. Well, you know what? Let me be honest with you. All the shows you always see black folks on every television show is either they doing bad on the show, they don't have no money. It's like good time. We love good time, but it's like, well, man, why we can't see something where we doing okay at? You know, why every show got to be about us being broke? You know, in this television show, I mean, I adopted a white kid. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole change of pace. You know, why? how come we can't be setting trends? You know, what, what, why are we afraid to set trends? You know, and I, I mean, you got to imagine what people don't look at where my business is going from there. It's going to a billion dollar business because now endorsements. We're looking at uh, 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 different type of collections, whether it's toys, whether it's uh, uh, dolls, stand-ups, uh, clothing, merchandising. I mean, this, this is for our people. This is an incredible opportunity. We'll definitely be able to make changes in the community from this show. You know. Now we're doing a piece on um, on Aretha Franklin because she's mm -hmm. being honored at, at our Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your favorite Aretha Franklin song? Oh man, Aretha Franklin got so many songs that uh, I would have to think of what would be my favorite. Um, wow, Aretha Franklin is such an incredible artist. I mean, I like that loud verse that she got. Uh, I'm trying to think of this one song that I really like. Um, what's this one? What? what? It, was, it was like, a, I can't think it right off of my mind right now, but mm -hmm. give me some of her song. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yeah. Uh, think Young, Gifted, and Black. Uh, Pink King Cadillac. Tell. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know, when I think about Aretha Franklin, man, I think of uh, Pink Cadillac. You know, that, that song is just incredible. You know, Aretha Franklin definitely took uh, commercializing soul music to a whole nother level. Like when people see Aretha Franklin and, you know, the, the vocal cords that she has is, is incredible. It's spiritual. And it's, uh, it's soul music. I mean, I, I think she definitely have a class of her own. And she definitely is a trendset. So when people think of Aretha Franklin, you got to think of respect. And you got to think of uh, Pink Cadillac. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you're no stranger to movies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, Hollywood is now starting to... Uh, produce films that's dealing with the Tupac and Biggie murders, like, yeah, Hollywood Homicide, you got yeah. Sylvester Stallone developing his movie. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Hollywood, you know, cashing in on the tragedies of hip-hop? Well, you know what? It, it's sad that we don't look at it as a negative, but if it was just another black artist against another black artist, they'll probably be killing each other up off of, oh, you done took this song, you done took this movie from me, took this idea, and it's sad that Hollywood could take something and stereotype us with, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, I definitely think it's a story for Tupac and Biggie because it's an unsolved mystery. And I think it should be something from our angle of the table. And I think our people should be able to give that back to the world, you know? And uh, it's just incredible for me to be a part of Hollywood to say, well, I come from this hip hop world and now I can make big movies, you know what I mean? From blockbuster movies, Hollywood Homicide, to going in 60 seconds and being able to perform with those type of actors. And it's sad that I'm able to perform with those type of white actors. And then you get Samuel Jackson make a comment about he don't want to make a movie with a hip hop artist, which is sad. Well, if these big professional white actors can make a movie with us, you know, why, why would he make a comment like that? When all we trying to do is make it off the cone. 
make it off the block, you know, and the whole thing is about saving our babies, saving our children, you know, and, and I think any black man opportunity, because I like Sammy Jack, I think he's an incredible actor. I just I just didn't like the comment, you know, I mean, I think he should be making a comment about the Tupac and Biggie thing, rather than making a comment about acting with, uh, having some kid from the ghetto getting some money that they gonna give to us. You know, so it, it's definitely a serious issue, man, and that's why we gotta put ourselves in position where we can make moves like this, and that's what I'm doing right now, putting us in a position where where we able to create the real deal. You know, I call it Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? So that's the next episode of my business. You will be seeing the Master P. P. Miller, Hollywood, you know, doing stuff that, that we couldn't imagine doing. And you look at some of my movies that I done did from lockdown, you know, to uh, I got to hook up, you know, to Foolish. You know, this is real reality movies from whether it's funny or serious, but from our perspective for real. Okay. Yeah. That's my last question for you. You ever plan to go into politics? Um, hopefully right now I'm just having fun and you know, when you're in, in the politics I think you gotta have a perfect background. I come from the streets, I don't I don't think that's something that I could do. But down the future as I mature, who never knows. You know, I'm not gonna close the door to it, but I just think when you're in a political side of something, people are always trying to pull up your background to 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 put that against you not knowing where you come forward from being, you know I mean? Me coming forward from my past to now, I'm a total different person. Well, I mean, you never hid your background. Oh, no, you I know. always put it out there, yeah. so. Well, you know, I'm just saying, I think with, with politics, that's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to be serious and you know what what, 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 what what could you fit in in the marketplace with that, mm -hmm. you know, in society. And my thing is, I definitely think the man up above that I was able to make a change, but I don't know if I'm ready for politics yet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, thanks uh, a lot, man. Uh.